So I, I only use Valentine's Royale porcelain, and um, I already know that it shrinks 15%. And I do prepare it just by what we call spiral wedging, which is just to make sure it's all evenly mixed. So a little bit of soft clay with the harder clay. So spiral wedging because you get a nice spiral with the clay. That's a nice spiral there. So that makes sure all the clay's all nicely mixed up. Rather hard work for an old man. And I know these porcelain jugs that I'm throwing for my big charity throw down need to be 10 ounces. That's old money, I'm not sure what that is in grams. So I measure 10 ounce balls of clay. And so I'm happy that. That's my wedding complete. I presume you're going to edit this, aren't you? So, how are you? So, so, got my 10 ounces. As many of you know, I don't make pots anymore. I make guitars and furniture. So my touch have been able to cut the clay and know it's exactly 10 ounces. My touch is gone, but that is not good. Um, trying to make about 50 pots in the next couple of days so that when people come to the Heritage Centre on the 3rd and 4th of September, those that don't live in Ledbury, can take their jug away. And uh, yeah, all the proceeds are going to Four charities, Herefordshire Mind, Beat, the Eating Disorder Supporting Charity, Haemophilia Society, and Ledby Places, a local charity trying to ensure buildings stay in the use of the community. So I'll be demonstrating on the 3rd and 4th, and you're all very welcome to come. So I'd normally make about 20 of these at a time and then from here I go on to the wheel. But lay that out nicely so that I'm all geared up. You don't like having tiny bits of clay but as long as you come on them in. Trying to make the balls of clay into pear shape eventually, not circular like cricket ball. By the end of the day, I'll have the touch. I think a lot of it's muscle memory. And after a while, as long as you've got the weight of the clay correct, um, the pots do tend to come out the same size. Okay, so that's the end of that process. I always wrap my clay up because it dries very easily. Oh, and I'll need a little bit of clay just to make sure I fix the bat on the wheel. Okay, so we'll go to the wheel next. Okay. All right. I prepared the, the balls of clay at ten ounces for these squeeze jugs, which I'm going to be making. I normally throw about twenty-five at a time in in succession. I don't use a lot of tools. Um, I have made a little oak jig, as I haven't made pots for months and months and months. Just to check until I get my muscle memory working. And I throw on bats, because porcelain is so rubbery, I throw on bats and then I leave the pots on the bats until they go leather hard. I slice them off when I throw them and then I um, leave them on the bats, so I have to have a lot of bats. Put a tiny bit of clay on the wheel head to just level up. If I haven't thrown pots for ages, 
the boards are a bit dry, so I'll just damp the back. And then I'll just, whoops, lo I've got locating holes in the bags, and we're away. I fill the little hole in the centre of the bat because that stops the bottom of the pot cracking. I just slightly damp the, not wet, just slightly damp. And then I take my ball of clay and I smack it in the middle. And then keeping my arms down, for those who haven't thrown before, I keep my arms always down. This is a Fitzwilliam uh, throwing wheel, which I've had for many years, my favorite wheel made by a man who worked with the famous potter Mick Casson and they developed this wheel together now. They're like gold, sadly he's not with us anymore so you can't buy them now. So, so I'm centering the clay now, a bit difficult to see but what I'm doing is I'm holding my arm down on the side of the wheel very very firm to try and make that ball of clay absolutely central running the same as the wheel head. You'll see, once I've, see, I, that I don't want. So by going in nice and gentle, holding everything steady, and then when I release my arm, my hand from the ball of clay, I always release it very slowly. Once I'm happy, I might cone it up and down a couple of times just to smooth the clay out. So I'm coning the clay up and down, obviously with a tiny lump of clay, not quite so important as with a huge lump of clay if I'm throwing a big bottle. And obviously, the scale of my hands doesn't go with the scale on pop, the, the pop I'm making. Once I've got it nice and centre, this is called opening up. So I take my finger, I press it down to within a, well, in real modern terms, about four, four, four millimetres, five millimetres, perhaps from the top of my bat, so I'm getting the inside of my jug, the shape that I want it to be when it's finished because you cannot go back to the inside to improve the finish. So I've got the inside a nice smooth rounded shape, then I'm going to collar the clay in and that is when you get all your hands around it and you're throttling the clay in. So you're making it into a shape that doesn't look like the finished jug. But keep, always keep the top narrow in the finish shape. And then my hand in the center, my massive hand in the center, <laughs> if I can get it in. And then this is called lifting and I'm squeezing the clay and lifting gently at the same time. So I'm doing that and then lifting. Sounds like a little bit like a throwing lesson, but not meant to be. So I've got my little jig here and I can just check whether it's high enough, whether it's wide enough, and it's neither. So, so a bit thick at the bottom so I'm going to bring more clay up from the bottom always looks quite narrow and but you'll see later when I do the squeezing it automatically seems to get wider so I'm just taking a little bit of the liquid clay called slip off the side of the pot just to so it ends up on there, put that in the side. And the thing is with porcelain too, you've got to get every last drop of water out of the bottom of the pot. If you don't, you'll find that the bottom of the pot will crack during the firing. So I need that to be absolutely. And I've got a real soft natural sponge here and I do like to just touch the rim to make the rim look quite smooth. I don't worry too much about little lumps and bumps and in fact once I, uh, I've thrown it I try not to touch it at all. So that can all be done. So there's my basic shape. 
I take a metal, this is called a turning tool, so it's a pointed tool. Any work you can do on it now, and this will just clean up the base. Any work I can do on it now just saves me the turning work later. So I'm just trimming it just, just enough to make it look a bit more tidy. And then this is the magic. So they're called squeeze jugs and the reason is of course we squeeze the sides. So I'm trying to turn for the camera. So I do it with my hands like that. I wet my two massive middle fingers and then just gently but I then turn it 180 degrees and that's the wonderful thing about this wheel it's so sensitive you can do that and then I do it again just to make sure it's nice and even and then what I do I put the lip so I'll try and do it again show the camera so I put my two fingers each side and my one finger inside and it's got to be absolutely at 90 degrees to my squeeze and then I'll just give it a little touch there just a touch and there you go a squeeze jug can't touch it now until it's leather hard so I take my wire I make sure this is perfectly dry, or as dry as it can be. That's the, the base of the part. I don't want to draw any water underneath the part. So I take this fine wire, and I turn the wheel, and I cut it underneath. Get my knife or a screwdriver or something, and then just, and there you go. One down. 99 to go. So I made a few jugs yesterday and they're now in perfect condition for turning. Turning is the term we use for tidying up the bottom of the pot. So rather than it look a little bit uh, rough on the bottom, I, um, I have a special little turning tool. I don't have a lot of tools as I said earlier but I love my little turning tool from Australia this is. So I damp my pot, I damp the wheel head and then I'll try to get it to run centrally. Not easy with the fact that this my squeeze jugs are so oval at the top. Once I feel it's, uh, I think the term is as good as it gets isn't it? So I'm fiddling it around with it to try and get it really nice and central at the top. Not terribly successfully yet. Perfect. So I press it down and then I make a sausage of clay. You could make a, a jig to drop these onto, but it's quite nice. Just taking your time. And when you don't have a proper day job, you can take your time. So, with this steel turning tool, I'm always holding my hands on the top because it can fly off. I keep my right arm down and my left arm tight into my chest to try and keep it as steady as possible. And that shows those nice shavings coming off, shows that the clay is in nice condition. So all these nice shavings, it's perfect. So I'm rounding just the bottom slightly. And then I do take a little tiny chamfer off the bottom so that when I glaze my pots, there's a definite line that I can wipe the glaze off so it's a nice clean line, so almost a little 45 degree chamfer I put on the bottom. So like that, and it's 
going to be difficult to see because it's porcelain. And then I run along the bottom. Obviously, oh, difficult to get down there and do it. So. If the pot was nice and round, I'd do this a lot, lot faster. But because it's a bit dodgy and oval. So I never sign my pots, but because this big this is a big charity event, I've agreed to sign my pots with a black ceramic pencil. Which means I need to get the base quite smooth. I'll just touch up. A little bit more I need to take off there. And if the pot, if I take too long over this, and the pot um, rim dries out, what happens is it flies off the wheel and all my hard work's gone. But this looks pretty good. So I'll then gently lift that off. So you can see the profile is just a bit nicer. And then I just quickly, while it's in this state, before I put it down back on a clean board, I just, you may recall when I made the lip, I say you have to be very careful and then you don't touch it. Well now I can just make sure it looks pretty good. I have plenty of time to clean it again before I put it in, in the kiln. So, not only am I going to sign them, but I am going to be um, putting my little H for Houghton stamp on it. And I do that on my table, so uh, I'll probably move over to the table and do that now. Well, I'm happy with that now, so I'm just going to lift it off, check it's okay, and I'm going to put my little H seal on there, which is porcelain clay. I scrape it, I put a little bit of slip on there, and a little ball of clay, and then I've got my little H, which I roll in. People seem to quite like that, so I'm still going to do that. So I'm just going to just scratch the a little mark and I put it exactly opposite where the spout is. I like to do it in line. And then I get a little bit of slip out of my wheel. Tiny bit of slip on the clay. You see that there? Then I get a nice soft bit of clay. Tiny, tiny. I don't know. If we're in millimetres, maybe it's only about three or four millimetres diameter. And I make sure it's nice and in line. And I do really gentle tapping. So you can see at the moment it's quite wet. So I get a nice natural sponge. It's the best sponge you can get for the fine porcelain. And then I just, just very, very gentle. Again, all a bit fine for somebody who's got hands like plates of meat. So I then have my H for Houghton, my little plaster seal, and I'm going to gently, I mean, I've got a line on the top which shows the top of the H, and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to press that in there. And I hold it because the, and I'll go round and round and round, pressing it gently as I go. And because it's plaster of Paris, the stamp, it just absorbs a little bit of wet off the clay so it lifts without sticking. So I'll do that a few times. And there's my edge. So one pot finished. Just needs to be fired twice, glazed, polished bottom, and then wrapped in tissue ready for the customer. Looks quite nice shape that one. They do vary a little bit because they're hand thrown. Yeah, I like that one. And I must only, only ever put it onto clean, clean 
surfaces now. People think putter is dirty, but you have to be very, very clean. So, let's open the kiln and see how the biscuit firing, the first firing, is a thousand degrees and get ready for glazing. It's always exciting opening a kiln for a potter, even as exciting as when I did pottery at school. Well, no explosion, so that's a plus. They're in layers, the pot, so I'll just empty that quickly and um, we'll start preparing for glazing. Called a biscuit firing because it looks and feels a bit like a biscuit, a bit too hard to eat, but yeah, it just hardens all the clay up. So I've got a few of my pots here to glaze. So I've got in this tub here my transparent glaze, which we fire to about 1260 degrees centigrade and that puts a very, very hard coat on and makes the pots totally dishwasher proof and being porcelain, very, very hard indeed. The glaze has settled out all the time, so I'm going to be stirring it. So I need to stir all the glaze so there's no sediment in the bottom. And it's the consistency of single cream, halfway between single and double cream. And then now and again I sieve the glaze so that there's no big lumps and bumps in it. It's all nice to have a nice clean glaze. Putting my hand off in the bucket. And I glaze with tongs, like glazing tongs. I don't use my fingers usually unless it's really big pieces. So, I'll pick up my pot in my glazing tongs, making sure no part of the tongs is touching the edge of the pot. And then I'm going to quickly dip these in and out. shake. Very, very quickly the glaze, the, the, the biscuit pot sucks the water out of the glaze and you can see just in a few seconds it's okay to handle with your hands gently. Same again, just keep this up. Only 98 to go. Just a few seconds, very gently. So what I'm going to do now is go to the other side. So I've glazed these few ready to uh, clean up and sign the bottom. I never sign the bottoms of my pots for, but for this special charity occasion where I'm trying to make 100, I'm going to uh, sign the bottom and date them 2022. So I'm going to clean the bottom. I, just, I use a, a, a wooden uh, modeling tool just to get the, the worst of them. You see I've turned a little bevel around the outside and I have lots of clean water and different sponges. So this is what I call my first sponging. So you can see the different colour from the, just the colour difference there. I then, with a very clean water, sponge it again. I don't want any residue of glaze on the bottom of my pot. So after I've cleaned the bottom, I check the pot over and where my glazing tongs have been there might be just a couple of pinholes and I can just rub that in. And you can see a little drip on the rim there. I just very carefully get my nail. Just get the worst of that off. The rest will just mould in when it's fired. So I'll clean a few of those up and then we'll have a look at the signing. 
Okay, so I've uh, got four finished pots here and uh, a special pencil which is uh, made in Switzerland uh, and the lead of the pencil is actually made of uh, coloured ceramic oxide so when it's used for a, as a pencil and then fired it fires into the base of the pot so it's there forever. As I mentioned earlier I never usually sign my pots but for this um, charity raising celebration and hopefully I'll meet my £4,000 target for four local charities um, it'll be a little bit of a collector's piece so here we go so I'm going to sign my name as simple as possible and 2022 and this is almost the last process goes back in the kiln for glaze firing and then hopefully we'll finish off with a little bit of exciting uh, filming when I take it out of the kiln and wrap it in tissue. Not quite as easy as using an ordinary pencil. Just need to make sure I get enough. of the pencils oxides onto the pot. So there we go, just another 99 to go. Really exciting part, you may re recall from an earlier part of the video that uh, I had a biscuit firing and said how exciting that is. Well this is a glaze firing, so this is the final, final bit of work before I wrap them and send them off to the customer, or the customer collects them. So this is the new opening. So this is the glaze firing. It's gone up to 1260 degrees and it's been soaked. Wow, that is good. That is really nice. That's looking very nice. Yeah, so the lovely, lovely shine on the porcelain there. Or oh, on the Stuart hat, which I never ever do. It's come up really well. So now I'm going to take these over to my bench. I, I polish the bottom and, um, well, we can wrap a few. So this uh, is my total amount of pots out of the kiln and they do look amazing. I don't look as if I've got any horrible blips and seconds or cracks at the minute. So, so on the bottom of the uh, pots that I've signed, which I don't usually sign, you can see that there's a little bit of alumina. I always polish the bottoms of my porcelain. If you feel them now, they just have that slight rough feeling. So with wet and dry paper, I wet them to the bottom and then I really give them a good polish. You can hear the sand get smoother and smoother. Give them a little dip, a nice real good polish up with the cloth. Check them all over, check there's no little blips. Oh, very nice, that's lovely and smooth. And then I finally, what I really like to do is just wrap them really. And that's the whole process finished waiting to go to a customer. 